Welcome back. Nikki Fried was the last Democrat to win statewide when she was elected Commissioner of Agriculture in 2018. She ran for governor in 2022, but lost to Charlie Chris in the primary. But now she has been elected to be the new face and voice of the Florida Democratic Party. We began by talking about State Senator Blaise Ngalia's bill to ban the Democratic Party in Florida. The, the bill is nonsense, and it, it, it is, you know, unfortunately, I think the bill says more about who the Republicans are today uh, than anything else. You know, the, their version of history, their their version of canceling culture, um, and most importantly, the foundation of what our country is, that being able to have civil discourse and having political parties come together and work together across the aisles to, to pass legislation and issues that affect the people of, across our country and across our state. And so this piece of legislation tells us everything there is what's wrong with the Republican Party today, that they don't like civil discourse. They don't want people who don't agree with them to have a seat at the table, to have conversations and move our state forward. And of course, this is a bait and switch. You know, they, they don't want to talk about what's actually happening on the ground, that Miami has become the most unaffordable state city in this in the nation, that Florida has become one of the most, if not the most unaffordable states in the country, that people can't afford their rent, they can't afford their property insurance, they can't afford their mortgages. And yet this is the piece of legislation that they filed to, to silence opposition voices. Uh, th this is ludicrous. But again, it says more about the Republican Party today than it does anything else. What it also says about the Republican Party, though, is that it shows how confident and how, to some extent, cocky they are right now, given their position in the state of Florida, having just won so many rounds at different levels of the election in, in the fall, uh, and the perception that they believe Florida is now a red state. My first question with regard to you now as the Florida Democratic Party chair is, is Florida a red state? And if not, how do you come back from such a crushing loss that Democrats had where you where Ron DeSantis was reelected by a million and a half votes? You know, first of all, from everything I've ever learned in my life, if in fact you are confident and wanting to be cocky, then why bother with something of this nature? You know, this tells me that they know that there is a new day here in the state of Florida as, as chair now of the Florida Democratic Party. And the 19 point loss was not a 19 point win for Ron DeSantis. It was a 19 point loss of Democrats. Uh, we saw epic um, failures all across the board from voter registration to voter engagement to resources. Um, to how we coordinate and communicate to each other. Um, but we have a lot of work to do, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Uh, this is not a red state. Uh, this is still very much a purple state, and, and very much it's just a matter of that the Democrats have not been talking to the people. You know, we presume that we know best. That's not accurate. We've got to be listening. We've got to be investing in, in our very diverse state. And we need to make sure that our voices are being heard. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do, but I have confidence that when we fix the internal structural struggles and structure uh, inside the party, when we start getting back to the basics of what Democrats do, which is talking and listening to voters, engagement with voters, that we're going to be able to turn the ship around. Is it going to be happening overnight? Of course not. You know, it took us 30 years to get to this point. Uh, it's definitely not going to take us 30 years to get out of here. Um, but what the radical right has been doing is, is going to really make the pendulum swing a lot faster back to the middle, and, and we're going to be ready to capture it. You know, while you're trying to figure out how to rebound, there, the Republicans are trying to figure out how to bury Democrats even deeper. How do you get out of that? Because I think the people of our state are starting to wake up. You know, that everything that, that we hold true as Americans, as Floridians, whether it is you know, support for our public education system, support for our for our higher ed system, you know, recognition of the freedom of press, the freedom of assembly, the freedom of speech, all of these things that we as Americans hold true they're trying to dismantle and, and to silence voices, silence our teachers, silence the media. And the people of our state are not going to stand by. And they're seeing that what Ron DeSantis is doing is taking us down. You know, not only I've called him a dictator since 2020, it's unfortunate that, that he actually is living up to the name that I gave to him, but he's going in, into fascism, right? If you believe in your policies, protect your policies, but that's not what they're doing. They are saying that that now we've got the power, now let's crush our opponents. That's not how democracy works. Democracy only works when you have two strong parties. And unfortunately, we've got none. 
in our state because I certainly don't think that what this this Republican Party is today is not a strong party. They've been radicalized. And of course, we've got a lot of work to do in the Democratic side as well to bring us back in, into conversations. But what the Republicans are doing is saying, look, you're not with us. We're going to crush you, whether it is yeah, whether it here's is. Where, well, here's, just, where, here, here's where I'd like to push back a little bit. Ron DeSantis, I think by any objective standard, is immensely popular in the state of Florida. I think that if you were to take a poll of his popularity, it would rival that of what Jeb Bush was at, the, at his height. I do think that he speaks to a lot of people in a way that, that they believe he's fighting for them. I hear that over and over again. And I think that do Democrats go into this thinking that if you just dismiss Ron DeSantis as a dictator or a fascist, that that's the way to beat him when all you're doing is really is really galvanizing even more support for him, I think. So how do you come back from that? I ask again, what is the yeah. grassroots going to be like to be able to rebuild? So I think it's two things. I think to one point that you're making, absolutely. I think that people are starting to wake up when 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 parents are taking their kids to school and seeing that there's no books in the libraries, when our professors are leaving our higher ed system, when our kids are, are not wanting to go through a higher ed system and having to go out of state, those realities of, of these policies that, that Ron has been pushing, the lack of even ability to come and protest in the Capitol, all these things are gonna start adding up. But, in, but you are also absolutely right on this. What Democrats have lost their ways on is first and foremost, what do people care the most about? They care the most about making sure they've got a roof over their heads. They wanna make sure that they can have food on their plates for their kids, that they've got access to our educational system. And we as Democrats have to make sure that we are talking to the everyday Floridians who are living here. And, and we have to also get back to, to the concept that if we're gonna create a big tent, we've gotta be talking to everybody. You know, we, we have to make sure that we're talking to, to the moderate Democrats. We've got to be talking to the MPAs. We've got to talk to, to the faction of Republicans that are seeing that this is not their Republican Party, who has always been for less government, less taxes, less spending, free market. All those things don't exist under a, a Governor DeSantis administration. And so it's a kind of a multifaceted one. We've got to make sure that people understand what is actually happening here. But more importantly, and you're right on this, that more importantly, the Democrats have to go back to the basics, talking and listening to the people and hearing what's on their agendas and on their minds and making sure that we are fighting for them to make sure that we become a more affordable state, that somebody can come here and work 40 hours a week and be able to bring home a living wage and be able to afford whether they want to just you know rent or at least save up for, for housing. Is the National Democratic Party willing to help you and invest in Florida or have they written off Florida and are looking at 24 in terms of how to win without Florida? No, the, first of all, donors here in the state of Florida, whether it's traditional Democratic donors um, and national donors are excited about my, my new chair position, are excited because they know that I'm gonna get to work. I'm gonna rebuild our party. I'm gonna rebuild the structure. We're gonna get back to how to win. As the last Democrat to be able to win statewide and the only one to be able to do it in almost 20 years, I know how to win. And there's this new energy after the election last Saturday that people are saying, okay, we, we've got the right leader in place, let's get to work. And also part of our fundraising efforts is gonna be that low dollar, um, making sure that the everyday you know, Floridian and Democrat who are frustrated or angry or upset, but you know, it was always, you know, when Barack Obama said, don't boo, go vote. Uh, I'm saying, don't tweet, give. Um, give $5, give $10 recurring. This is also how we get people to have skin in the game, be part of this rebuild for the Democratic Party, and, and to make sure that everybody truly has a seat at the table and that we're listening to those voices. So it's a multi-prong. It's getting back our traditional Florida Democratic donors. It's getting back the, tra the traditional national donors. I've had lots of conversations with our national donors, um, and they were ready for a plan. They were ready for something new here inside of the party, and we're giving it to them. And I've had those conversations. They're excited. They're entrenched in Florida. They also know this too, that Florida has become ground zero for this radicalization of the Republican Party and that they've got to invest here. They've got to come here. They know that so much of the messaging from the Hispanic community across the entire country comes from South Florida and they can't just write us off. They know that we need help. We need support. And now with me at the helm of the party, they're going to invest. We'll be